Hi, my name is Victoria Finley Wolf, and I am a licensed designer with Sizzix. Today, we are going to be looking at piecing the facets die. I am obsessed with small pieces right now. Something that repeats over and over and over with little pieces, and it is absolutely something I do not want to cut out with my rotary cutter. Hence, having a great die where you can do some not quite mini piecing, but definitely with some small pieces and have a lot of different options for layout, which is always something I'm looking for when I'm playing with my Sizzix dies. So let's look at cutting out some shapes and then I will show you all the different options that you can do with this die. So we are using the Big Shot Plus machine today, but you can use your Big Shot, Big Shot Plus and the Big Shot Pro with this die. Okay, so I have my cutting pad on the bottom. Go ahead and put the other one on the top. We can cut up to eight layers at a time, which I really like. You'll notice today I'm using solids because that way it's not going to matter if it's right sides up or not. I can use it, the solids and make a parts department. I'm going to cut a bunch of layers of fabrics out, a whole bunch of pieces so that I have a lot of different options to play with because that's what it's all about. You should be able to be playing and having some fun with all of your fabric. I'm go ahead and run that through the machine. What you're going to notice on the die, I'm going to pick some of these little shapes off so that you can see each of these. We've got two of the little rectangles. We have these little shapes, the little half square triangles, but there's two different ones, okay? And I'm going to explain the difference between those. There you can see all my different little shapes, okay? So on the little triangles, Two of the little sections have a dog ear that's cut at an angle, and the other two are straight up on the sides. So that is for you to, so that you know where to put your pieces together. And I'm going to show you that here on, on the, this little house shape that happens on the end of the block. When we're doing for construction, the piece that has the straight sides goes on first and is going to line up right on top of each other. So when you have all those little triangles and you're like, where does this one go? We know that the very first piece is always going to line up straight on the sides. Just sewing a quarter inch, I can zip that all the way across my block. Now that I've sewn that all the way across, I'm just going to press my seam allowances to the dark side of the fabric. Now this is where these two little triangles that have more of an angle on their dog ear, we want that because now when we lay this piece right on top, look at how nicely that fits together. That angle matches up perfectly, so you will have perfect construction. So when you have all of your pieces cut out like this, you could be chain piecing. Chain piece the first one, right? The little straight edge piece, sew it on all four sides of the block then come back and then you can chain piece all the left hand sides and all the right hand sides of that little shape. This lays in there so nicely you can see that I don't even use a pin when I'm doing that. I'm just making sure when I put that underneath my needle it's laying exactly where it needs to be and also where it ends. Lining that up. Just lay it right where it's supposed to go and let the feed dogs do their job. There we have our little corner unit, okay? So that's the construction on that little guy. And this one, for this inside block, is obviously just straight on top, straight seam down the side. Again, and I'll press that seam allowance to the dark side. For this, I'm just going to finger press it. I think that's totally fine. Okay. Okay, so there are my little units for this block. We've already cut out our square, so we have it here in white. I'm sort of mimicking what I already have sewn together here. So right now, I have my darks that are sitting to the inside of the block, and I have the little house shape, the navy blue point, out facing to the outside of the block. But the options that we have are we can turn it to the inside if we want to, to give it a slightly different look. Or we could even turn this all the way around so that the lights are in the inside. So now we have that as an option. Oops, I already turned that one. This one. There we go. Okay. 
So we have different ways that we can play with the w color placement inside of here. What I also like is, you know, remember that you could just use a certain part. If you want to just die, um, die cut a whole bunch of these little rectangles and just sew a whole bunch of little strips together, there's other ways that you can put these pieces together to make some different blocks. I mean, you could even be taking these four little pieces, just the corners, get rid of the other parts altogether, and you could do little units like that. I mean, how cute is that? There's a whole nother quilt that I don't have it to show you. This is what we get to play with today though, but let's look at this anyway. So once we have all these units, we make a decision on our color placement. I'm going to go ahead with the lights. Here I've done the same block, but I've put a different color green on the inside. That's the fun that you get to have is playing with the color placement. So now when I'm going to sew these units together, I'm going to just want to sew this together into three rows and then we'll have the block finished. So I'm going to lie this right on top, edge to edge. What's nice by keeping this little square up on the top of, of the, the little strip piece is that I can see my stitching line. So I know that when I sew across, if I don't cross inside of that intersection, I'm going to have a perfect point on this side. I won't have sewn that off. The information that I need for great piecing is right there in front of you when you can see your previous stitching lines. Okay, so there's the first one sewn off. So because I could keep my eye on where that stitching line is to cross right at that point, that means when I open this up, I have a perfect point that's landing right on that seam. All the information I need for accurate piecing is right there, and that's exactly what I love about my Sizzix dies. Okay, there's the first unit. I'm going to continue to sew, and I will just sew the straight edge on either side of this block to make my second row. Again, when you have these units made, you could be chain piecing these if you're doing multiple blocks like we have in the quilt behind me. Make all your rows. Make sure you're watching your color placement so that you don't mistakenly turn around the way that the block should be lying. Always have a look before you sew. On this row, if I'm using a light color fabric on the inside, I'm going to want to make sure that my seam allowances are pressed to the outside of the block. If I'm pressing it this way, I'm going to get shadowing underneath that light fabric. So always press those seams to the dark side. If I do that with that center block, then I know that on the opposite, I will press them the opposite direction on the first row. So that way they're nesting together when I'm going to sew the rows together. So I have my three rows already sewn together. Now we're going to look at putting those units together. When we have uh, a matching seam here, we're going to lay this right on top of each other. Again, when I pin, I like to put the pin through at a quarter inch directly through the seam one at a time because that way I know the seam is going to live exactly where I put the pin in it. I don't have time for seam rippers. I like to do it once and call it a day. So I'm going to put my pin through. I do this on just about everything that I piece. That is also a way for me to check if I'm still sewing a quarter inch. You don't want to see that kind of driving when you're sewing your seams together. So keeping an eye on the quarter inch means that when I'm sewing along, again, I have the information that I need. I have my previous stitching on those points so that I know I'm not going to sew those off. And I also know to aim my needle for where the pin's going into the fabric, that's just to make sure I'm still sewing a nice quarter inch all the way across the top. So up to that pin and then I can take that pin out. I don't want to take it out too early, otherwise the seams will move. Making sure that my end is lined up as well. I don't want to forget about my beginning and my end. Those fabrics should always be lined up. Okay, there's the first side. I will press those seam allowances to the outside of the block. 
Again, I don't want to have the shadowing under my light fabric. And then I will go ahead and I will pin and do the same thing to the opposite side. There's my final seam across the block. Again, press that seam to the outside. And now I have an adorable little matching block where I can put all of those together. I can start looking for secondary patterns that are going to happen in there, depending on if you've switched your placement of your colors, whether your light or dark is in the inside, whether your outside blocks are pointing to the inside or the outside. You can make those minor adjustments and get a whole pile of different blocks that you can play with. Okay, so let's have a look at the quilt. Actually, let's look at this quickly. This is the same block that we were just piecing together with the little uh, house shapes pointing to the outside. And you can see we were just having some fun. There you can see what happens with your four patches in the corners where you actually make that little cross block. Um, but having some fun with your color placement so that you can do some different placement and play on color just by choosing different fabrics and having a really scrappy outcome. I love that. One of the other projects, the one hanging behind me, I wanted to show you because this is a six and a half inch block, which also works with my diamond sampler block. Now, although this is a rectangle and this is a square block, it doesn't matter because the width of the block is the same, which means that I can start dropping in many of my different Sizzix dies together. Um, some of the other dies in the Sizzix collection that are also based on a six and a half inch block you could be putting and making a really nice sampler quilt out of all the different possibilities. So just by using the diamond sampler block and the facets block and interchanging on the color palette, again, ease of construction because of the dog ears already being uh, chopped off using your die, you've got perfect piecing and you can make some really fun and interesting yet complicated looking blocks and have a lot of fun with that.